Hey, welcome to the next video. In this video, we're going to activate the button that says Sign in with Google. This means that you can use a Gmail account and be authorized to your Firebase database. Up until now, we've just been making up fake email addresses. And so some of the benefits with a Google sign in is that you get real addresses from your users. Their users don't have to remember another password. And so you just rely on Google for most of your security. Now to make this sign-in process work, we're going to have to host our website on a web server. Now you have some options. You can either register a web server with one of the online services like GoDaddy or somebody like that, or you can just install one locally. And that's what we're going to do. I'll give you three options for a web server. First of all, there's this server called MAMP. M-A-M-P stands for Macintosh, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So it's used frequently for people that are using PHP and a MySQL database. However, it serves web pages and we'll use it today in our example. If you're more into the JavaScript world, you might have NPM already installed on your computer, Node Package Manager. And there's a web server that's already built into that. You can use that if you wish. Or if you want to use something like a USB Web Server 8 for Windows, this only works on Windows, but it doesn't require any installation of any applications on your computer. It's self-contained, it's portable, and you can use that as well. It works a lot like MAMP. I'm going to be using MAMP for this demonstration because it's already installed on my computer. So looking at the files, I see that my Hero Maker HTML file is inside a folder that I created way at the beginning of the demo. And so I put it into one of my documents folders. It can run from anywhere. However, the Google sign-in is going to require this to be on the web server. And so I need to go open up my MAMP documents folder or your other folder, depending on which web browser you're running. So I want to show another folder. So I'm going to choose File, New Finder Window. Windows is slightly different, but you have the ability to open up two windows side by side there as well. Now I'm going to go to the Applications area and then look for MAMP. So MAMP is listed in the alphabetical order under M. And then I find htdocs. This is where the web server stores all of its uh, documents that it, it's going to publish. And let's double click that so we can see all of the different websites that I currently have running. So let's make a new folder and I'm going to call this thing Hero Maker. Now I need to put the uh, Hero Maker file that I've been working on and copy it over to this folder where the web server is. So I shall right click and copy it and come back to this window, right click and paste. I'm going to double check that MAMP is actually running. So you can see that this green button is there showing that everything is good. Apache and MySQL are running. And so now I should be able to go to my web browser and look for a web server called localhost. And localhost colon 8888 is the default for MAMP. And so that's what I type into my localhost uh, address. Now I've created this folder called Hero Maker. Let's select that. And you can see inside of there is Hero Maker HTML. And sure enough, everything looks exactly like it did before. So no changes so far. However, sign in with Google will now have the ability to work and you'll see why here in just a second. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to my console for my database on Firebase. Now I need some information. I need documentation on how to make this login system work. So I'm going to go to the docs. I'm going to select guides. Down on the other left corner, I'm choosing authentication. And then finally, Google sign in. So first of all, we've done the first part that says add Firebase to your JavaScript project and a few other things. We're going to need this provider command. And then further on, we're going to need a button that says sign up with pop-up. And so keep those in mind. We're going to use those in just a minute. Now I'm going to switch back to where my web server is hosting its documents. And for Hero Maker, I'm going to open this again with my text editor. So I'm using Visual Studio and it should bring it up just like I had before. But now I'm editing it from a different location. Now, the button that we need to activate is the login button called Google Login Button as its ID. So that is the uh, button listener that we need to create next. So 
So I'll scroll down to where we have button listeners going on. And a good place to put this would be right below the sign in button. So it'll take the same format as the sign in, except we are using the Google ID for Google login button. So when somebody clicks this, we're going to run a function and that will process our login. So inside of this button is where we're going to put the Google login actions. Just to ensure that this is working, I'm going to put a console log message. Okay, save the work and let's go back to our web browser and just check to see if any console log messages appear when we click the button. So sign in with Google, we get the message. So the listener is working. Now let's go put some code into that button. So back to the documents for um, activating uh, this Google login. And I'm going to copy some of the code that they've recommended here. So the provider, we need this line first. So let's copy that. Switching back into my code editor, I'm going to paste it. Switching back into the documentation, I scroll down to section five that says, we're going to authenticate using the Google pro provider object. So let's just copy the entire block here. Switching back into my code editor, paste. Now let's check out, let's see what they're doing here. So they're creating a call to this function called sign in with pop-up. And so we're expecting to have a pop-up message uh, occur when we click this button. They call something a token, which is the um, access that says, yes, you've actually signed in. And then we can store the result in a variable called user. Well, we already have something called current user. So I'm going to delete the word var and rename this to current user. Let's just check to see if this is working. So I'm going to do a console log message and say logged in. And then I'm going to also log the user to see who it is that actually was logged in. So further down, we have this catch function, which is there to handle any errors. And so there's an error code that gets set and a message. So the part that will be most useful to our users is the error message. So let's uh, not just get the error message, but let's put an alert and call it error message. So that probably says things like uh, incorrect password or unknown user. Okay, so that should actually be the only code we need. We could probably uh, just dispense with these things here. We're not going to check the email. The error code is an option, so I'm going to delete that line. We're going to just make things a little bit shorter. The only thing I care about right now is the error message. Now, let's see if this works. It's not going to, we're going to have an error. So I'm going to refresh my page, then try sign in with Google. We get the pop-up message, but then we have an error that says, the given sign-in provider is disabled for this Firebase project. So let's switch back into our console for our database. This time we're going to select the option called authentication. And authentication gives us all the lists of the people that are here. We want to choose the sign-in method. And notice that we have only one enabled right now. So the third one down is Google, it's disabled. Let's click the pencil, enable it and save. I, automatically, by default, you get Hero Maker ID and the Firebase app. That is automatically set. And yours might or might not have localhost. So if it's not there, you can choose Add Domain and then type in localhost. So mine's already there, so I'm going to leave it alone. Now I'm going to switch back into the application, refresh the page, and let's try sign in with Google. This time it'll bring up any of the accounts that are on my web browser and I can choose my name and if you need to enter the password you will. You should get your message that says you have logged in. Okay so now let's go down and see if we can create some heroes. First of all let's refresh the page see if things are working. There we go. So the heroes that are running are already in the database. Let's add a new hero. So let's pick somebody. I'm going to add Ralph and somebody and click his create new hero button. So Ralph shows up as a new item in my list of heroes. Let's go check it out. There's going to be a slight difference in the database now than what we had before. So switching back into the console and choosing database, 
I will see that we have a new hero called Ralph. Now let's look at the owner on these objects. So the first Donald Trump, the ID of the owner is listed here. And Ralph, even though they're difficult to remember, you can see that these are different IDs. Down below we have users. We have two users. We have uh, Victor at Hogwarts that was created earlier in the tutorial. And then I just signed in with my address. And then underneath of my name, there is a list of heroes and Ralph, the one that I just created is there. So I have two copies of Ralph. One is listed under my name where I just logged in. So it appears that Google login is working. 